Hello, good morning. I'm Dr. Yap Boon Tat. I'm a senior anesthesiologist from the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences, University of Malaysia, Sabah. Today, I'm presenting to you regarding the anesthetic considerations for mothers who undergo cesarean section. In my talk today, I will be divided my talk into several aspects of which will include physiological changes in pregnancy, the anesthetic concerns, and the procedures of general anesthetic and the regional anesthesia. I hope all of you will follow my talk closely and will enjoy the presentations very well. In this segment about anesthetic concerns in pregnant mothers, I'll be talking regarding the physiological changes in pregnancy. As we know, pregnancy involves the mother and the fetus. Therefore, the mother must supply all the adequate nutrition, the blood and oxygen to the growing fetus for the past 40, 38 weeks. Therefore, the mother will have several major physiological changes during her pregnancy. This will be classified into several systems accordingly. The central nervous system whereby there will be a reduction in the minimal alveolar concentration MAC, required by the mother by about 40% and the mother will be having an increased sensitivity to local anesthetic agents LA. Therefore, the mother will have an increased risk of awareness during anesthesia and the risk of high or total spinal anesthesia will be there if the mother chooses to have regional anesthesia. The mother's airway will be engorged and risk of edema. Therefore, the patient often will have difficult intubation and thus needing smaller endotracheal tubes ETT. The mother's respiration will be increased and therefore increased oxygen consumption so that it will have adequate oxygen supply to the fetus. Due to the gravid huge uterus and the baby, the functional residual capacity FRC will be reduced. With this position, especially in supine, the mother will have rapid desaturation during apnea. In the cardiovascular system, the mother often have an increased cardiac output due to an important supply to the fetus. And the physiological changes were have a reduction in the systemic vascular resistance and with the increased huge uterus and the baby, there will be autocarbal compression. The mother thus will have hypotension during supine position and thus the importance of left lateral tilt so that the gravid uterus will not impinge onto the abdominal aorta and the inferior vena cava to prevent hypotension. Some mothers may have heart disease in pregnancy. Therefore, this condition in supine will have the mother to develop decompensation. Hematologically, there will be increase in the blood volume and increased coagulability. So, there will be physiological anemia in pregnancy and thus, the mother will have a capability to tolerate blood loss during the pregnancy especially cesarean section. Due to the hypercoagulability, the risk of deep vein thrombosis DVT will be higher and thus the mother should be encouraged to ambulate early. Gastrointestinal, because of the huge gravid uterus and the baby, there will be reduced gastric emptying rate. Therefore, the mother will have a risk of aspiration pneumonia, especially under general anesthesia. For more elaborations on these physiological changes in pregnancy, I have recorded several YouTubes on my channel. So please kindly view this uh, YouTube and learn more from them. I have done regarding the respiratory changes in pregnancy, cardiovascular changes in pregnancy and hematological changes in pregnancy. In summary, the main considerations of anesthetics are respiratory system, cardiovascular system, gastrointestinal, and the hematological system. Because of this, we have to be very careful when 
considering whether should we giving a general anesthesia or regional anesthesia for the patients who undergo lower segment cesarean section. Patients who undergo cesarean section, we should carefully evaluate the patients for any spinal deformity because this will risk difficult spinal or epidural anesthesia. The mother will have engorged epidural veins at the back because of the gravid uterus. So there will be a spinal or epidural hematoma should we uh, attempt spinal anesthesia. As mentioned earlier, the central nervous system, there will be a required there will be reduction in the minimum alveolar concentration, the MAC, by about 40% in mothers who undergo general anesthesia. Therefore, the mother will be at risk of awareness. Because of the increased uh, gravid uterus, there will be a reduction in the CSF, the cerebral spinal fluid volume across the spine, especially at the epidural space. Therefore, there will be increased pressure at these spaces and the risk of getting total or high spinal anesthesia will be there, which will need urgent resuscitative method should the patient develop sympathectomy, which will present as hypotension and bradycardia. Musculoskeletal system, due to the enlarged uterus and the baby, there will be increased lumbar lordosis and thus there will be a difficulty in performing spinal or epidural anesthesia. On top of that, constant and regular uh, uterine contraction, okay, especially during at labor, the mother will not be able to cooperate with the anesthetist to sit up straight for us to perform the spinal epidural anesthesia. Due to the increased body weight of the mother during pregnancy, there will be altered pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics throughout. Therefore, it's very difficult to pro predict the effect of the anesthetic drugs that have been administered. Other considerations include fetal respiratory depression with the usage of opioids, okay, like fentanyl or morphine. Okay, the baby will become fetal respiratory depression. We should consider the urgency of the lower segment cesarean section, whether it's an elective or emergency, and the underlying medical condition of the mother, whether they <coughs> have eclampsia, preeclampsia, uh, gestational diabetes mellitus, or heart diseases during pregnancy. So all these factors should be taken into consideration during anesthesia for these pregnant mothers. Thank you very much, and I hope all of you will benefit from this first lecture of the day.